the plan was to have Barack Obama eight years as the president, and, and, and they were able to pull that off. And then the next eight years was going to be Hillary Clinton, right? Hillary Clinton is completely owned by, by you know, the, those, and I'll address exactly who's in charge here in a second. So that was the plan. Eight years of Obama, eight years of Hillary, and the United States of America would be a socialist country by now. We, and we would, as I've, as I've said very publicly before, we would probably be called the United Socialist States of America at this stage. And what happened was Donald Trump got in the way. Donald Trump decided in 20, summer of 2015 to run for president. And so he did. Fast forward. The first phase of that was to steal the election and make sure that Hillary Clinton won. Well, they didn't take it. They didn't go far enough, okay? There was actually, most people don't know, there was actually the states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin were challenged by the Clinton campaign after Trump was, was uh, elected, okay? And, and that was done in within the first probably 72 hours. I was in the room, and uh, Trump said, be my guest, take, you know, audit, the, audit the whole thing if you want. And they came back and they quietly said, we looked at these states and it ended up where uh, Trump ended up with, with a, a, like a couple of hundred thousand more votes once they did that audit, all done quietly. Because they did try to, they did try to, to, to fight that uh, initially. But once, once Trump was fully in charge of the, of the uh, transition, then they knew there's no way in the world, and now this is Obama, under the Obama administration, Obama's still in the White House, then they knew they had to, uh, to do something different because there was no way in the world that they were going to allow uh, uh, Donald Trump to have a successful presidency uh, while he was the president. They, that, that wasn't the plan. And so now they kick things into full gear, high gear, under Obama, right? This is while Obama is still uh, in the White House in the late part of 2016, early 2017. A meeting that occurred on the 5th of January, 2017, it, it came out in my, in my the, dis, the dismissal of my case and the evidence that we fought for, as well as was touched on in the Durham report. In that meeting, 5 January, 2017, in the Oval Office was Barack Obama, Joe Biden, John Brennan, Jim Clapper, Sally Yates, Susan Rice, and Jim Comey. Okay, that was the people that were in that meeting. And we know exactly who was in there. We know exactly what was talked about because it came out in evidence in my, in my case. And, it, and, and parts of it came out in the Durham report. So there's no, you know, oh, he's making this stuff up. People look it up. So that was the initial phase of the coup to basically get back in power and get rid of Trump, okay? The second big phase in, in terms of chunks was the 2020 election. There was no way in the world that they were going to allow Donald Trump to win the 2020 election. But the planning for that did not start on 2020 or, or didn't, it, didn't start in November of 2020 or even 45 days prior using mail-in ballots. It started with COVID. So the introduction to COVID. COVID was, in, was actually discussed back in the early 2000s. Actually, it was discussed during the, during the, the time frame of the Bush administration, even though you know, the, the Bushies really didn't know much about it. And it really, it, it didn't have to play into there. But the uh, 2015 timeframe, it clearly came back in. And, um, and they started to talk about the introduction of a bioweapon, a bio attack into the United States of America to be able to, to do different things, right? And so by, uh, uh, COVID was introduced in the, you know, in the, early, in the late 2019 timeframe, uh, where, where if you really go and you dig, you know, you can see elements of it talked about in December because the World Games were being played out in China in October and November of 2019. And then in 2020, or, uh, December of 2020, you started to hear little, little you know, elements of, of some, uh, some uh, media reports that came out. And then all of a sudden, January, February, boom, we got hit. COVID, right? So then you had the... The, the COVID introduction and the whole purpose of COVID was to make sure that the 2020 election was in the bag, okay? And once they did that, the real part of COVID, the introduction of COVID, of this bio weapon by China, was to ensure that we could change our election system and process, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of examples about states that use mail-in ballots 
once like Oregon, as an example, started using mail-in ballots in ni late 1990s, and they've never been anything but hardcore liberal progressives since then. So they knew that what the, what the impact of mail-in ballots would be, and of course, uh, ballot harvesting, but principally mail-in ballots. So, so damn near everybody went, okay, can't have, you know, people going to the polls and we're going to introduce mail-in ballots. And, you know, so many people, to include Bill Barr, the attorney general for, for Trump in June timeframe, June 2020, said mail-in ballots are filled with fraud. Everybody knew it. Everybody knows it. Filled with fraud. So 2020 comes along. Boom. 2020 is one of the most, you know, dishonorable elections that we've ever had in the in the in the nation's history because for anybody to think that there wasn't fraud involved and not one not one republican governor has ever stood up and said maybe there was just a little bit of fraud in 2020 because they all can't stand trump none of them i'm talking about every governor